Hello, Vince Campy here. Now, we're going to do something pretty fun today. It's um, animating text. So we'll do a very simple animation of text. Um, we'll do a tween, and we'll use the file we began in, um, in the last one. So I'm going to go to, I'm again in Flash 8, File, Open Recent, and the one we used, I've saved it as a different file, Animate Text. So, supernova. Okay, now, see how it's just huge? I want this to fit in the screen, right? Because I want to see 100% of it. So remember, right up here is this blue uh, double arrow. Go up to Fit in Window. Aha, there it is. Now, uh, I'm seeing 100% of the stage in this window here. Okay? Remember, we made this into a movie clip. And now we're going to be able to animate the movie clip. That's the great thing about the movie clips. So... We're going at 30 frames per second. That's our frame rate. I don't need these right now, so I'm going to close these windows and move this so I can have a little more uh, timeline showing. OK. I'm going to double click on this layer because I want to rename the layer. So I'm going to name that title. All right. OK. So what you want to do when you're doing a uh, a motion tween. That's the animation we're going to do. It's called a motion tween. And it's 30 frames a second. So say we want it to elapse over maybe three seconds. Okay. Then in three seconds, we want it to be in this position in three seconds. So we click right on frame 90. Click once there. Now we're going to insert timeline a keyframe. Okay. A blank keyframe will take away the word because it'll be blank. We want a keyframe. When you insert a keyframe, which is also timeline, notice frame, if you just put in a frame, is F5. For some reason, they didn't write it here. But when you put a keyframe in, it's F6. And a blank keyframe is F7. Not sure why they don't have it, but that's how that is. OK. Click over here. Now, we have a, um, a keyframe here. And so that has the exact same um, information on it that the one before it had. So many times when you do an animation, you want to set things up on the first frame, and then go out to where you want it to end. Then click there and put a keyframe in there, or hit, hitting F6 on the keyboard, or going to the Insert Timeline keyframe. And then uh, that'll be sure, that, so it's going to end up just like this right here. OK? So we're going to scroll back over to the very beginning. Now, we can play around with this here and um, not worry about it not ending up in the right place. OK, so a real simple thing we can do is go over here to the free transform tool, or if you use the keyboard command Q. So let's click right on this. Now it gives us this bounding boxes and the adjustments. So we're going to twist this around and have it do a really fun little animation with it. So you see, when you come right here, you get those two arrows pointing to opposite directions. If you just drag, click, hold, and drag, you've, it looks like you put that text right on its back there. OK, I just clicked on the stage to deselect it to see it for a second. Now I'm going to click back on the, uh, well, I have the transform tool, so do that. Now I can make it a little tiny, or I can make it huge. Uh, maybe we'll do that huge thing. So I'm just going to go like this and just make this thing, I'm just stretching it out here. OK, now what I ran into is I'm bumping into the edge or going off the edge of my stage here, and so I'm not able to do anything. What I can do is I can make this smaller, view it smaller, and then I can uh, have more um, room to move. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to go down to 25%. Now that's the whole thing, but I'm only viewing it at 25%, so I can go ahead now and make this huge like that. And what I think I'll do also is I'll think I'll spin it. Now with the free transform, if you go towards the corner, it gives you that circle. See, now I can rotate this around. So maybe we'll put it like almost all the way over like that. And leave it huge. Okay. Now, I'm going to hit the Apple Command S. Windows, Control S to save this. I like to save things a lot in case it quits or does something funny. Um, you have it saved. Now, we want to do, we want to now do the tween here. 
which is the actual animating. Because right now what you have is you have the first frame set in this crazy weird position. Then if you drag the playhead, usually drag this from this red square rectangle, excuse me, at the top. You just click hold and drag that down. I'm going to go down to frame 90 and watch what happens when I, okay, right there, bam, I go there and it's back on there like that. So boom, boom, okay. Not a real great animation, okay. So what you can do is click anywhere in here on these frames. Just click somewhere, okay, and right click or on a Mac you hold the control key on your keyboard and click and you get this dialog box and you want to create a motion tween. So you click on that and then you should get a solid arrow all the way down. Now if you drag this playhead, drag it, you see what's happening there? It comes in all the way down to frame 90. See so it comes in and there's your animation right there. Now the way I like to play things back, I'll hold the Apple Command key with my thumb on the right side and then just hit return and that will publish that and it will play that animation. Now this is the animation we just did. Now you notice when you get right back to it, uh, right to the end, it jumps back to the beginning. When you're using um, or testing it out in a Swift file, it does that. It continues to just re repeat and repeat and repeat. I'll show you what we can do. There's several things, but I'll show you one thing we can do. Now, close this window. And um, at the end here, 90. Okay, if we put another frame, like let's say 130. Okay, that'll just give us a little bit more time. 30, uh, like a little over a second, where it'll just hang in this position. It'll just stay there. So if I click there, and I hit F6, you won't notice much of a change, but see if you scroll right here, it's just staying there, and then it goes back into that, um, that animation. So now, if I go to Control uh, Play, but Test Movie, which is that Command Return, now we'll notice it'll play, but now it'll stay there for a moment. See, it stays there for a little bit of time, then repeats. Okay, we'll get into that whole thing, putting stop actions and things on at a later date. Okay, so that's a little simple animation. Now, what I like to do a lot of times is I'll maybe make this invisible here, and then when it, by the time it gets to the uh, frame 90, it'll be visible again. So, click anywhere on this, and that brings up this window. Sometimes this window is not here, and you don't have the choice of the color here. But right here, if you color, and then go to Alpha. Alpha is going to give you your transparency. So click on that, and I had mine set for zero. You can again move it up now. 100% Alpha is totally opaque, not see-through at all, not transparent. So you can go to any level of transparency. Now if we start at zero, you can't see a darn thing here. But if you drag your playhead, you see it starts becoming visible as it comes in. Okay, so now I'm going to try and play that. Either go to Control Test Movie or the Command App will return. There, it has a little bump to it, but um, I'm not sure what that is. Not going to worry about it too much at this point. That is how you do a simple animation on, um, on some text. You can do start it and spin it around any way you want, and it will, um, it will animate and land where you want it to land because you've determined that at the beginning. All right, have some fun with that, and uh, we'll get back to you next time with the next step. We're going to be looking at some drawing tools.